We're back, sadly not with quite our usual excitement over a new Bobo VR product. Let me fill you in. It's time to finally hopefully undo this hack job and replace this with a more proper battery strap. Now this is the M3 Pro head strap. I thought I was gonna be getting the conversion kit to turn my M2 Plus head strap into that, but that's not here yet. There's been a whole bevy of distribution problems with Amazon, but for now it looks like this is staying on my Quest 2, and we're gonna be just installing the M3 Pro itself directly onto my Quest 3. Now, if you haven't taken your strap off yet, it's pretty straightforward. Right here on the back side, you can see where the speaker separates from the plastic. If you just put your thumb there and push, pretty much just snaps off. Facial interface is a little scary. You might be able to get away with not taking it off, actually. You might just wiggle this. Yeah, I guess you can take that off without doing that. Hopefully we don't need that again. Same thing with the old Bobo VR lineups. They do have this right here that can go through and attach to that. I typically use these straps without it. I don't feel this piece is necessary at all. We'll test it both ways for you. But if you don't use that, you actually can install this without ever removing the facial interface. Slides on one side. Slides on the other, the cable. I usually kind of run it back in through and around to kind of hide it a little bit more. Still looks like we got a good amount of length, but you do have to account for the fact that if someone unwinds this all the way, it needs some of that length to stretch out. If I don't like this bit, I will end up removing it, but for now it's gonna dangle there until I decide. And it does come with alternate back pads. Right now it's got the thick padding instead of the honeycomb. I usually switch to the honeycomb, but for now we're gonna try it as intended. This is something that gets a little confusing. I do wanna talk to you about this real quick. The straps came out, M2 was the original, no battery. Then M2 Pro came out, which was like the high-end edition, but it had that hard plastic back. M2 Plus is the most recent one, but now that we're going to the Quest 3, we got an M3 Pro, which might confuse some people because the pro is still the nice squishy back pad that was a sign of the plus i think the problem was ultimately people got confused they thought pro was better than plus so they went back to pro but it might confuse some people feels extremely familiar as in the old days i do have to adjust this in to get this near my face but oh m g already this is a world of difference this feels like my familiar old friend that i had on my strap here but now with all the clarity and that everything i'm used to with the quest 3 Oh, but it's so much lighter. You really realize how much closer that weighs to your face, how much more balanced it is when you get in a familiar head strap. Because for a while, it was like I was just stuck with the Quest 3 head strap, and I was like, oh, it's back to this again from the Quest 2, but I hadn't used that strap in so long, I wasn't really feeling them side by side. This is like a world of difference. This is so nice. But it's early, and I've got a lot of testing to do with this thing. So I'm going to take it out, go test it out in the wilderness, in the wild, and at home. <laughs> Who knows? But we're gonna do a lot of testing and get back to you after we've checked it out some more. Real early thoughts so far. I do feel like this part right here, I wanna bring it in closer to my face, but that's stopping it? I do wonder if this is just universal though. So what I mean by that is if you look at this, this is clearly longer than this. I wonder if I can just turn this thing around. I might risk breaking a strap if I really try this. Oh yeah, I don't think I was supposed to do that. Oh? Oh, boy, that does let me get a lot closer to my face, though. I really think by the way it worked, I shouldn't have done that. But since it happened on one side, it's got to happen on the other, right? Gets Bobo strapped to test, immediately modifies it in some way. <laughs> We're not supposed to, to make it better. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Because well, the thing is also, if you were getting the conversion kit, you could choose to do this whatever way you wanted, really, because you're going to be installing it yourself. It does fight me a little in the back end, like you don't have as much adjustability to pull the lenses down because this is now pushing on the plastic. So this is definitely the wrong way to do it. But gosh, I feel like I can get it so close to my face this way. That feels good. It felt good before, but I can get it even closer. I'll test it both ways and I'll come back at you with some final thoughts. This does really feel like it shouldn't be like this because now I can't like turn the front like I'm used to doing, but I feel like if it's okay, why not just leave it? I'll get back at you soon. We're back, sadly not with quite our usual excitement over a new Bobo VR product, so let me fill you in. If this is your first time here on the channel or you just haven't been around lately, there's been some issues with Quest 3 and charging in general across different head straps, different batteries. And we had a full video covering all of that. So if you already caught that video, feel free to skip this chapter right here. This is just gonna quickly tell people what's going on to get them up to speed and why we're having some issues. Basically, an issue that we discovered is the new Quest 3 eats a ton of power. We knew that the battery life was short, but we found out that depending on what kind of battery you have, what kind of watts it's running, you'll run into issues. You could have it plugged into the wall and the headset might still die. You might be using an old battery pack and the headset will die even when the battery still has power. Weirdly, an issue that I've only been able to find on some Bobo VR batteries is sometimes depending on what game you're playing and how demanding it is, 
sometimes they drain out really fast. The one time I caught it on camera, we'll talk about that in a minute, 26 minutes and one of them ran out on camera. Before that, I had a couple run out and I thought maybe I just messed up, but it seemed like it was in minutes because it was playing songs on Pistol Whip. That's an issue that I'm running into with different batteries in the Bobo VR head strap with the Quest 3. This was a kit brought forward from the Quest 2. Some of them are 15 watt batteries. Some people are saying they're 10, but we've seen this one that I have right in my hand right here is a five volt 2.6 amp, which technically should be a 13 watt. Some of them are five volt three amps. Basically right now, as it stands, there is no perfect reliable solution yet for Quest 3 charging that will keep the headset juiced, continue to charge it, and run hot swappable style where you can always have batteries run like we had on the Quest 2. We'll have more answers to all those problems in the future with more updates. Meta saying there may be some software update they can do because even their elite straps are having problems with this issue. So now that everybody's up to speed, what does that mean as far as how the M3 so far is treating me with my Quest 3? First of all, it still is the most comfortable a Quest 3 can be by far. I have one, it's staying on here. It's gonna live on here as long as I have this until there's a better solution. So it is what I'm using every single day. That doesn't mean it doesn't have a little bit of the issues we had before with the Quest 2. I found, especially as I'm growing my hair out a little bit at the moment for my Halloween costume, uh, even with the honeycomb, it's slipping a little bit as my hair is longer than it usually is. Not a lot because you have a little bit better weight balance in the front now, it's not pulling around so much, but I still find sometimes I'm reaching back and pulling the back end down and adjusting it. And I know some people have that on the M2 edition. These nubs still touch on top of your head. I never had an issue with them, but a lot of people out there felt like these were weird. They didn't love that. They actually put thicker pads on the later edition, like these ones to help with that, but it's something to consider. A new issue now with it being on the Quest 3, these ports here stick out and I kept founding, I wanted to push it a little bit closer to my eyes, keep it a little closer. I showed you that way you can flip this thing over. It wasn't a good permanent solution though, because I just lost this adjustability with it that was needed for certain face shapes. So I flipped that back around. It takes all the pressure off your eyebrows and your cheekbones though immediately. So I found actually the facial interface, the stock one that I was not liking at all, became tolerable suddenly because I didn't notice the way it was pushing on my face anymore. It just had that same feeling as the old one where there's not really any pressure anywhere here. Like I can shove my finger in, even if I tighten this down, this still feels very flexible and it doesn't feel bad on my face. They also said there's now a new solution that you can use this for. You can go with basically a Quest Pro style and you can have it hovering in front of your face like this. I did a lot of testing with games like this. It felt very familiar with the Quest Pro, but one thing, the Quest Pro covered here, this you can now see out of as well. So it does change the peripheral of not only having all of this, but this got a little more distracting because if you have lights up in your room, that was a little bit more blinding. It was getting in and causing a little more glare. If you came from a Quest Pro and you love that, you might like this solution, having this like this. I personally still felt like for gaming, I wanted the immersion of having the light blocked out, which did surprise me because on the Quest Pro, I didn't mind it at all, but it was really this part up here that was causing the issues now, where this, I didn't mind seeing light out there. It does make for an option that way, but also I found with active gaming, it did tend to do a little bit more movement over time. Like if I put it up here, I'd find that over time, it was kind of falling down, starting to rest on my nose with all the bouncing I was doing. It's a mode if you're interested in playing with that, but what I might say is you might actually try the weird thing where I flip this around and then do it that way, because you can get a little closer to your face, even get a little bit more of that field of view out of the headset, and it wouldn't be so bouncy. Ultimately, I'm back to the honeycombs. I like them. I like that they hang on a little bit better, but as I said, with longer hair, I notice it does kind of bounce around a little bit more and doesn't stay quite where I want it to, but it is the most comfortable option we have. But that brings us to this battery issue I've been having, and that has got to be the main and possible deal breaker. Until we know exactly why this is happening, I can't say you should go get an M3. It's just to me, if we find out that batteries are draining too fast or they stop working over time because of this problem, you're going to have a really comfortable head strap and a battery that may or may not continue to help working for you. If you're thinking about an M3 conversion kit because you already have an M2 strap, you wanna sell your Quest 2, you wanna get rid of it, they're cheap enough that it would probably be worth it to bring your headset forward, bring your head strap forward and be able to use it in the meantime. If you just got a Quest 3 and you really want a good battery strap that's gonna give you tons of life, a comfortable head strap, I gotta say maybe wait. Maybe wait on a solution or find out exactly what's happening to these batteries because some of them are great. I put it on, it gives me another hour or two of battery. It's not quite the Quest 2 life where it was seemed like forever. Some of them are working fine. Some of them I have it on there and then I get the low battery warning and I realize my battery must have died faster than expected. Sadly, I wish I could tell you, oh, well, there's this or that. In testing, I've only found one battery 
pack that reliably charged the headset and kept it going so far. And it was an around the neck one, which I really don't like the design of. As it stands right now, I'm gonna keep using it. If that tells you anything, that's, this is my head strap now. I just, I can't count on these like I used to be able to. And also one very weird thing, it does that weird sound sometimes when there's no battery on it. It doesn't do it consistently like all the time, but like when you plug or unplug this thing, sometimes, or when it's sitting next to me, I notice that weird random beep out of nowhere. That's a minor thing, but it's just kind of a nuisance when it's sitting there and you're like, why is it beeping? It makes you think something's wrong with it. So unfortunately, I wish I had a better answer of whether or not I think you should get this right now. But for me, I'd say if it's just for the Quest 3, hold off and wait a minute and see what's happening with these batteries. Plus, I mean, tons of people have already ordered them and haven't been able to get them yet because there's been so many stock issues with Amazon. So at that point, I know maybe some of you can't get them anyways. So maybe that doesn't matter right now whether to answer that question or not. If you have one and you're out there and you have had issues with the battery discharging or if the battery's running great for you, I'd love for you to do me a big favor. Go in the comments and tell me what does your battery say on the back of it? Is it the five volt 2.6 amp? Is it the five volt three amp? And which one of that is either having issues or not? Because I have found the one battery I have that's a five volt three amp does seem to more reliably discharge fast and badly, but I had it happen with one of the 2.6s as well. So there you have it. I'm comfy again. I'm very happy with my comfort. I just am not as, I don't feel as safe about doing like three hour long sessions of Demio because I don't always know what's happening with my battery. And that may be a Quest 3 issue that has to be fixed through software, or it could be battery specific, watt specific. We're trying to learn more. If you wanna learn more about that question, I'll leave a link up here to that video talking about the issues that we had, but Otherwise, I just want to say thank you, everybody. You've been showing up. Channel's growing like crazy. So thank you so much. I'll see you in another reality.